Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Dan from Pinpoint Wildlife. Today I have a little announcement for you guys. Um, I am going to be starting a new uh, show, if you want to call it a show. It's going to be called Species Checklist. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to be talking about uh, whichever species I come across. It might be a plant, it might be a fungus, it might be an animal. Now with Species Checklist, there is going to be five uh, main categories we're going to be covering. First of which being characteristics. Uh, generally like the appearance, um, why this animal might have big teeth, or why this animal has wings, or why this animal has claws, stuff like that. And then uh, second, we're going to be talking about the stuff it eats, how it gets its nutrients, um, pretty self-explanatory. Then we're going to be talking about the distribution and habitat. Um, along with this I may talk about um, the conservation status of that species, um, if it's threatened, if it's endangered, if it's uh, where it lies in that spectrum, as well as um, the habitat in which this species thrives in. And that, then it would go into our next category, whether or not this animal thrives in captivity, and um, what, what things you would need to, to make sure this animal thrives in captivity, if it's been successfully bred in captivity, or it might not be able, you might not be able to uh, have this species in captivity. So that's going to be one of our categories as well. And then last but not least, we're going to have one category dedicated towards breeding and mating, and um, what, what sort of behaviors um, go down when this organism breeds, and um, does it lay like a thousand eggs, does it just lay one a year, um, does it have to be a certain season, H how does that all come together? And I think with those five categories, we'll have a decent understanding of the species we're taking a look at, and it'll be pretty easy to make, for me at least, and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy watching it as much as I'll enjoy making it. And uh, yeah, that's my little announcement. And today we are going to be looking at the first uh, species on the species checklist. Uh, it's gonna be a gray tree frog. Let's go. Today I have a bit of a special animal. It is a gray tree frog. Now I'm not sure if it is a Cope's gray tree frog or an eastern gray tree frog because they're they're basically the same in appearance but let's take it out the first thing you might might have noticed is hey man this ain't no gray tree frog this is green and uh, you're right it is green and that is because they have the ability to change back and forth from like a green coloration to like a gray coloration which is really cool because a lot of people think that's only a thing in in chameleons, but you'd be quite wrong because a lot of other animals have the same ability. Now I want to say this is a male. Uh, he's a little bit smaller. Males are going to be like anyway. Males are going to be like one to two inches, and then females are going to be like one and a half to two and a half inches. So yeah, I think this is either a male or a smaller female. It's kind of hard to tell. It's a little early in the tree frog season. And basically they're going to be breeding up most of the summer. These guys are a tad bit more slimy than some other frogs. That's because they're going to be secreting a mucus. And that mucus is slightly toxic. So if you are handling these guys, make sure to wash your hands after. And don't rub your eyes while you're touching them. So if you were to eat one of these things, um, it probably wouldn't kill you, but it'd make you like real sick. So don't do that. I don't know if this is the Cope's gray tree frog or the eastern gray tree frog. Their distribution kind of overlaps, and they have basically the same uh, physical characteristics as one another. And there's basically almost no way to tell the difference. They both have the ability to change from uh, gray to green. They both have the yellow coloration on the on their backside. And for a while, they thought there was just one species of gray tree frog. But now, in recent years, we have the ability to test these frogs genetically, and we found out that the eastern gray tree frog is a tetrapoid, whereas the Cope's gray tree frog is a diploid organism. Basically, that just means the eastern gray tree frog has twice the number of chromosomes as the Cope's gray tree frog. Now, there's a common misconception that more chromosomes mean you're a more complex or smarter organism. That's not actually true. I'm going to bring up an example on screen of a very simple organism that has a ton of chromosomes and then 
compared to a human, which we consider very advanced. We only have like 48, I believe. Now the call of these, now some people say you can use the call, now some people say you can use the call of the Eastern Great Tree Frog and compare it to that of the Cope's Great Tree Frog, but their mating calls are entirely dependent on their climate. In other words, if it is very humid, in other words, if it's very humid, the eastern gray tree frog might have a higher pitch call, but if it's really dry, the eastern gray tree frog might have a lower pitch call. But at any given time, any given temperature, if you were to compare the two, if you had them both doing their mating call, this is how you could probably compare the two. Gray tree frog, Hyla versicolor. Adult gray tree frogs mainly prey upon different types of insects. Mites, spiders, plant lice, snails, and slugs are all fair game. Interestingly, they've also been seen eating their own tadpoles or even smaller tree frogs. Gray tree frogs breed at night. Males begin calling in late April to early May. The mating season may vary based on the climate conditions. The female lays between one and 2,000 eggs which are externally fertilized by the male. Gray tree frogs are a very widespread species of frog. They are found throughout much of eastern United States and similar to other amphibians that live here in Wisconsin, the gray tree frog has the ability to survive harsh winters as low as negative 8 degrees Celsius. According to the IUCN, the conservation status of the gray tree frog is marked as least concern. Although not very popular, they do have some success in captivity and have similar care to the American green tree frog. A vertical 10 gallon glass terrarium with lots of vertical climbing space, a moisture holding substrate like cocoa fiber, and at least two hides would be beneficial. Remember to always do your research though, this is not a care guide. Uh, some places won't allow keeping a wild caught amphibian, mm. so do your research. Alright, the gray tree frog is now checked off our species checklist. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification to be informed whenever I drop a new video. Thanks for watching and keep your eyes peeled because there's going to be more of these species checklist videos in the near future. How's everyone's day going so far? It's Dan from Pinpoint Wildlife. Come on,